Welcome to another episode of World Surf Weekly presented by Barefoot Wine. This year, the Red Bull Big Wave Awards are witnessing one of the closest XXL biggest wave battles in the 20 year history of this event. I'm so excited, I've decided to bring in Professor Pete, that's right, Pete Mel, to help announce this potentially historic award. Thanks for having me, Chris. Yes, this is an elite award, the CBDMD Women's Double XL Biggest Wave. It's about who rode the biggest wave of the season. And this year in particular, I know there's a lot to talk about. So what makes the battle for this year's Women's XXL Award so special? Well, you got to have two surfers involved in this one at Nazare. During the Nazare Challenge, Maya Gabiera and Justine DuPont, it is about who rode the biggest wave of the season. And it happened on the same day. And this could potentially be a Guinness Book of World Record. Oh, well, in that case, I'm bringing out the drum. It's time to announce the winner of the CBDMD Women's XXL Biggest Wave Award, Pete. And the winner is Maya Gabiera and a new Guinness Book of World Records. Congratulations. Oh, an incredible feat for Maya Gabiera. This is gonna be special, Pete, because we get to tell her the surprise of her season. So let's bring Maya in and do this proper. Well, this is very exciting for us, Pete. We're going to welcome Maya Gabietta into the show. Maya, welcome to World Surf Weekly. Chris Cote here with Pete Mel. And first of all, how are you doing? Where are you doing? Where are we talking to Maya Gabiera from today? I'm in Nazare. I'm home. Uh, I'm doing well. I hope you're all well, too, and healthy. Doing good. Well, Pete, I think you've got some uh, good news for Maya, potentially. I do. Congratulations, Maya. You are the CBD MD Double XL Biggest Wave Award winner and a Guinness World Record at 73 and a half feet. How do you feel? Thank you so much. Maya! <laughs> I, I really didn't expect to go any bigger or anything like that. I just kept riding and enjoying my time in Nazare. And that wave was, uh, was quite special, although it was it was terrifying as well. But thanks for... for um, honoring that wave and um yeah i'm i'm a little bit uh, thrown off but thank you maya what does this wave mean to you obviously it's special you've set for a second time a guinness world record yeah i never i never thought it was uh, gonna happen to get a second one is uh is, is a little bit crazy i gotta wrap my head around it um but i want to say thanks to sebastian for for believing in me and driving me into that wave I'm, I'm just the result of, of so many things behind the scenes, you know, from people that inspire me to people that protect me to people that drive me. But yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that. So Maya, an unprecedented second Guinness World Record in the books for you. I know you're not going to say it, but we got to ask it. Does this make you the greatest female big wave surfer of all time? No, no, no. It's just, it's a proof to myself that I, that I still love the sport so much, you know, even after so many hard times and hard years and, and serious injuries and traumas. It's a, it's a bit surreal what's happening right now. I, I don't know what, I, I really got caught off guard. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's our job. <laughs> well, congrats again, Maya, for an incredible feat in big wave surfing. Thank you. As I said earlier, this is one of the closest decisions in the history of the big wave awards. The WSL deemed it necessary to have the data reviewed by an independent scientific team, all to determine who rode the biggest wave. Now the team is made up of members of the Wave Coast Science team, the Scripps Institute of Oceanography, and the University of Southern California. So to give us more insight on how the numbers stack up, we have two members of the team joining us now. Chief Scientist Adam Fincham and Research Engineer Michal Piaska. How's it going guys? Going good, Chris, uh, and a pleasure to be here today. I'm excited about this. It's, it's really been fun. 
Uh, hey, Chris, thanks. Pleasure. Uh, we're very happy to have some results to share with you today. Now, guys, we're talking about determining who surfed the biggest wave between Maya Gabriera and Justine DuPont. So in looking at the research, I just want to know, Adam, how did you, how did you guys even start to unpack this challenge? Well, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, this is a, it, it was a challenge, I will say. And, and uh, what we, we referred to it as a little bit is um, it was sort of an archaeological challenge. We were given um, the basic video data and photographs or whatever was present from that day. And it was immediately evident that the two waves in question were very similar. And it was going to come down to uh, being very precise and systematic to be able to make a judgment that we could stand behind. So it was, it was difficult. Yeah, you definitely don't want to know my measurements because every wave I ride is automatically three feet bigger than anyone else thinks. Uh, Mihao, you're looking at two key photo assets and these are really going to be the map to measuring the wave height. So for you, what conclusions were you able to draw from the photographic data? We wanted to determine which of the two candidate waves uh, were bigger before actually quantifying their heights. So what we did is we took photos taken with the same fixed focal lengths uh, from the same location by the same photographer. These two were chosen as, um, as they, were very, they were believed to be the best assets uh, to use for the preliminary stage of this analysis. We started off with the surface heights, with um, board dimensions, but actually after reviewing the available data sets, uh, it turned out that the towing jet skis present in some of the videos might actually serve as a very useful reference object. Uh, and, and essentially improve the accuracy of measurements uh, that were initially based uh, solely on the surface dimensions. And then we compared uh, full-size photos uh, side by side and adjusted them for slightly different tilt angles. And here we see in this photo that Maya's wave is slightly bigger. And what is more, Maya dropped closer to the wave peak uh, than Justin, choosing a more critical line. There's a very important factor that you call apparent wave height versus real wave height. Does this basically mean our eyes can play tricks on us? And how do you solve for what is in our own minds? So most of the videos from the available data set were actually shot from the cliff, right? Essentially, the cameras were pointing downwards at a certain tilt angle, uh, and the wave uh, might appear slightly higher. Uh, we call this the apparent wave height. Um, what we did here is um, by knowing the viewing angle of the camera and the vertical dimension of the reference object in pixels, which is the surfers here, we're able to estimate the distance from the cameras to the surfers. And then knowing the height of the cliff and the wave setup, we could estimate the angle, uh, the tilt angle of the camera, so which gave us sort of a broader um, picture of, 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 of the whole situation on site, uh, essentially sort of combining different viewpoints. So we really had to explore um, all the maths here and all the data in order to be able um, to be as exact as we could with uh, uh, determining the situation, the location of the cameras on site. You not only have to know whose wave was bigger between Maya and Justine's wave, but how big was that wave? So in looking at uh, this, this chart right here, my mind is blowing with each and every thing I see on this page. Um, how does this chart, these equations, basically determine the height of this wave? This was our sort of first effort here was to use a statistical approach, i.e. take as many images and, and camera angles as we could and analyze them using the described methods and sort of pl plot several of these on the same graph and sort of take an average. And this was the method that we, we applied. The, the graphs speak for themselves. You can see that they're, they're quite close, these two waves, in, in, in their total height. So this is something that we used and came into general agreement with our colleagues at uh, the Scripps Institute of Oceanography that based on the data set provided and the archeological nature of uh, the objectives here, this would be the, the best approach. Hey, thank you guys so much for coming on World Surf Weekly. This is a, a huge and exciting announcement. We literally could not have done this without you guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for having us. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.